hi welcome back to the channel i made a bake girl purchase recently any ideas actually you already know from the title i recently picked up the new m3 max macbook pro from apple so i wanted to do an unboxing tell you why i decided to upgrade to this laptop and then also set it up with you so install all of the usual apps that i use so you can get an idea of the things that i like to have on my macbook and hopefully if you have been thinking about upgrading to the new m3 macbook or to the m3 max specifically it'll help you decide whether it's worth spending that money because this was freaking pricey so here she is my gorgeous new macbook pro i ended up picking out the 14 inch which is a big change for me because i have always been a 15 inch and then a 16 inch girly i have always just loved the larger screen it's always kind of been my main computer i do have a pc but the portability aspect of having a laptop is very very important to me and since my very first macbook pro i just continue to stick with the 15 inches and the 16 inches so I'll talk a little bit about why that is but first why did I buy this MacBook I have actually not had a personal laptop for probably like the past three or four years now I do a lot of the work that I do on the personal side on my work laptop as well mostly because I do also have that PC so if I need to do any heavy editing I can do it on that also, the laptop that I have for work is very capable, or it was, because I did have the M1 Max for a long time, and that was such a solid laptop. Like, I just never had any issues with it. It can handle anything I threw at it. It was upgraded to the 32 gigabytes of RAM, so I just never had an issue of it running out of, like, readable memory, struggling with any of the tasks that I threw at it. Recently though, I had to return that because we have our laptops on lease and I took over another ex-employee's laptop which is a M2 Pro with 16 gigabytes of RAM and the difference was stark. Like I just found that it lagged more even though it was the M2 model compared to the M1 model. I do understand that I now have the M2 Pro and I have the M1 Mac. So there is a bit of a difference there. And then of course, I think the most important thing is that RAM. I like to do a lot all at once. When I'm editing a video, I like to have my browser open so I can look for inspo, so I can look for music, stock videos. I like to also have Figma and sometimes even Photoshop open so I can design graphics for my videos. I like to have Notion open so I can have my creative brief open, sometimes some chats, so that I can talk to my team like there's just there's a lot of stuff going on when I use my laptops and I just found that it wasn't handling it like it was constantly reminding me that my RAM is full it's time to close some programs and so instead of just locking myself down to editing just at home on my PC which is still very capable I decided it's time I just reinvest in a personal laptop that is going to help with my workflow outside of my 9 to 5 and that's why I decided to upgrade and buy myself the M3 Max. Now as far as the form factor goes, I still truly believe that if it's your main computer, having the 15 inch and the 16 inch is incredible like the just having that larger screen i think makes all the difference when you are creative however i have been also traveling with the 15 16 inch for years and years and years and years now and oh i'm just over it i'm over lugging a massive laptop with me and pulling it out of my bag and going through security and then taking it out on the plane and not having enough space in my little economy seat to actually do any work comfortably. Like it's the perfect form factor for working at home, working at a cafe, and if you're not traveling far distances. But once I started traveling more with my laptop, it just became a major burden and something that I really noticed. So that's why I decided to try out the 14 inch will i enjoy this as much i'm not sure yet because i haven't used one but i will be sure to let you know if you have always sort of considered between the two this part is always so satisfying here she is 
is, oh my god, she's so tiny. I did select their upgrade package where I was getting more cores of CPU as well as GPU. So it went up from, I believe, 14 core CPU to 16 core CPU and then 30 core GPU to 40 core GPU. When you make that change, they do recommend that you go up to the 48 gigabytes of RAM as well, which I did. And the reason I decided to make those upgrades is so that I can future-proof this laptop as much as possible because I would like to not have spent this much money and have to upgrade in just like a couple of years. I'm hoping that this laptop lasts me at least four or five years. I did end up getting the Apple Care as well. I always try to get Apple Care for all of my Apple products so that I am covered. And in total, I paid just shy of $5,000 for this laptop in Canadian dollars. The box also comes with their usual like instructional or like manual stuff. And then of course the charging block. And then of course the corded charging cable that is MagSafe. So the big new <laughs> update other than the chip and obviously the specs is that with the new M3 MacBooks, I believe just for the pros and the maxes, you get the option of choosing a new color, which is called space black. I did not go with the space black. I am a silver girly through and through. So I personally went with the silver and it has this gorgeous like black Apple logo, which I actually don't know if I love that much. It does offer a nice contrast against the silver, but it obviously just makes the logo like very, very noticeable, which I mean, if you look at this, you know it's a MacBook anyways. It's just, yeah, the contrast is really great. And so if you enjoy that, it looks amazing, but I personally wish they did like a silver logo or even like a white mirrored logo because I think it would have just blended in and made the machine look a little bit more sleek. The super weird thing also about the new space black color is that the charging brick still comes in white but the corded cable comes in black and that is just a major no-no for me. I understand that it costs them more to create charging blocks that are in black but ooh, like why would you, it's just, it gives me the ick. It absolutely gives me the ick. So, it's just the weird thing if you're thinking about the space black. It probably doesn't matter to most people, but that would really bother me. She's so gorgeous. I love her. Okay, so let's set up the laptop. Honestly, what I usually do when I switch between MacBooks is that I would just use their setup computer transfer tool and sort of transfer everything that I have on my previous laptop into my new laptop. But I think what I wanna do differently for this one is I just wanna start fresh. I know it's gonna be a process and a half, moving things and installing things and just making sure that I have all of the apps that I want in my new laptop but I think it's just gonna give me a fresh start. Really give me an opportunity to evaluate what apps I'm currently using and whether I want to continue on with those apps. Just kind of have a nice little reset with my new laptop. So I've pulled up my applications folder on my work laptop and I'm just going to start customizing sort of the action bar and then start downloading some of these apps but just to name a few because I want to do a full video on this and actually go through like all the apps that I use as a marketing manager or as a content creator and give you some better software recommendations but just to name a few I use Vimcal currently for calendars, Spark for my emails and there's like Notion, Notion calendar, Asana, Slack, Art. Those are just some of the ones that I use very much so daily and then for design there's like Figma, the entire Adobe Suite. Uh, I obviously have also my Microsoft Suite which I use for work and then there's literally a ton of other ones that are more for customization or for more unique use cases. Again, I know I have my work cut out for me but I am really looking forward to setting up this computer as one that is brand new. Am I tripping or is it not showing that taskbar at the top? Is this a new thing that I don't know about? Settings, okay, here we go, there it is. But what if I close this? No, it's there. Oh my God, that was a really weird glitch. Has anybody else noticed that when they're setting up their laptop? Because I personally have never seen that before. Also, something controversial is, do you use your trackpad in the natural format or do you use it in the opposite? The way that the laptop come is natural scrolling, but I 
personally do it the other way. So like when I am scrolling this way, like when I make this gesture, I want to go down. When I want to scroll up, I push up. I've just been given crap about it from some of my friends, but that's just the way I'm used to. So are you team natural scrolling or are you team opposite of natural scrolling? I'm going to go through, I'm going to download some apps, I'm going to change the wallpaper, and you're going to see my MacBook transformed now. Okay, my new laptop is pretty much all set up. I actually just used the same wallpaper that I currently have on my work laptop as well. It's this dynamic wallpaper that I found ages ago and I'm still kind of low-key in love with it. It is dynamic in the sense that as the day goes on, the wallpaper will change as well. So it'll go from daylight to kind of dusk to nighttime and oh, it just makes me so happy. I pretty much installed most of the apps that I use on my work laptop. So in my dock bar, I have Finder, I have VimCal, which is what I use for my calendar. I have Spark, which is what I use for emails, Notion, and then Notion Calendar, which used to be Cron. Arca is my browser. I have Messages and WhatsApp that I always keep because I use those very often. Instead of Slack, I only downloaded Discord on this computer because I'm not gonna need Slack, really. Maybe one day when I have a use case, like a personal use case for Slack, we'll re-download it. But for now, I talk to you on Discord, I talk to some of my friends on Discord, so that is living in my sidebar, which is really crazy to think about. I have Figma, Photoshop, and Illustrator as my design tools, Premiere Pro as my video editing tool, and then the one I'm missing from here, which is currently downloading, is Lightroom. Lightroom Classic though, because I don't like the new Lightroom. And then something new that I downloaded for this computer is actually Raycast. Raycast is like the Apple Spotlight Search, but supercharged, so I haven't really played around with it yet. I can't tell you whether it's amazing or not, but it just has a lot more functionality than just your Apple Spotlight Search. And Honestly, I have learned about it because a lot of the like very productive content creators I follow use it. So I will let you know how I feel about it after I use it for a little while longer. But that's pretty much my brand new M3 Max MacBook Pro setup. Honestly, there's a few other things that I want to maybe tweak and play around with with the setup of this MacBook, but this is kind of like my baseline setup for MacBooks because it just contains everything that I use on the daily. And then there's a few Few other apps that I want to install that are more so yeah like edge cases and for specific tasks I guess. Buying a MacBook is a big investment whether you go from like the low end in the MacBook Airs all the way to the high end with like the M3 Max MacBook Pros and so I have some more videos planned so that I can give you a full rundown of exactly what I use my MacBooks for all of the apps I use and how I use them and pretty much just my workflow with my MacBook because I think that'll be really helpful when you are deciding whether or not you want to invest in a MacBook. So stay tuned for those videos because those are the ones that I will be working on next. But I think that's everything I wanted to cover today. I really just wanted to unbox it with you and give you my first impressions. I will say as I was downloading all of these apps, like I was doing Creative Cloud and Figma and all of my communication apps and my Arc browser, and I was kind of setting everything up at the same time, the MacBook handled it flawlessly there was no lag everything was just popping up closing popping up closing like it was working just amazingly and that is kind of what you expect when you spend the money and invest in a new laptop that's supposed to have this incredible processing power so i want to say first impressions is it's going well i will of course do an update once i've used it for a week or a month and really let you know whether it works for my workflow if you want to keep up with me between youtube videos i do have a newsletter that i update weekly as well as a discord channel that i try to chat with you guys in as much as possible so if you want to join in any of those feel free they will be linked in my description in my newsletter i do a bi-weekly five things newsletter but in this five things newsletter i share five things that i 
absolutely loved that I discovered or started using in the last two weeks. That newsletter also includes the books I'm currently reading, what I'm listening to, the articles that I found interesting, pretty much just anything that I have discovered that I feel like, oh my god, I think you would love this those all go in that newsletter and it's just an easy space for me to share with you all the things that I'm testing and trying and that is working. But I think that is everything. I hope you are having an amazing day wherever you are in the world and I will see you in my next video. Bye!